This video is sponsored by Huber Engineered Woods, the makers of Advantec and Zip System Sheathing. And in this video, we're going to show you how easy it is to install the Zip R sheathing. First of all, why are we using the Zip R sheathing in this case? Well, notice in the background, we have a series of cavities between all of our stud framing. We can cram insulation in there, and that's how we keep our house warm in the winter and cool in the summer. However, where each of those framing members is, there is no insulation except for the member itself. So by wrapping the house with foam, we're able to reduce or eliminate thermal bridging and increase the thermal resistance of the wall. So what does this mean for the homeowner? It means they get a more energy efficient home and they get a more comfortable home. So let's go over the installation of the panels, proper fastening, as well as some tricks to speed up the process. Oh, and we'll get into a couple of the things you need to know with regards to layout. Okay, so let's go over layout if you're using the Zip R sheathing. In our case, we were using the Zip R6, which is a one inch poly ISO bonded to a 7 16 panel, making a total thickness of one and 7 16 So here's how we need to lay out for that. Normally we would lay out right from the corner of framing and we would go east-west and north-south. So that's what I've done here. I want to fully cover this end stud with my panel and I want it to center over here. So here's how that looks. So notice that I fully cover the end stud and I'm centered on that stud at four feet. It's different though with the thickness of these panels. Notice that now I need to lay out from the outside of this panel and then center my stud at four feet. So all that means is I burn inch and seven sixteenths and then I lay out as normal. Here's what we do not want to have happen. We do not want to have the panel look like this. So if we started layout from that corner, that's what it would look like. But we want the foam to cover the foam. And it's okay that this edge is exposed. I'll show you how we deal with that in just a moment. Don't waste any time trying to carve out foam. So that's it for an outside corner. Now when we come to an inside corner, here's the only real change that needs to be made. Let me delete this stud so you can see it. We just need to add backing. So I go with a two by six on edge, a two by six flat and a two by six on edge. That allows us to insulate behind it. Then I would have a stud here. This is the reason why we needed to add that. Because this panel is now offsetting this, I need to make sure I have backing. So if I wouldn't have done that, I would have no backing for this. On this side, this is all the backing I need because my siding, it's okay to nail that into the panel. I already have solid backing here. I'm just gonna nail it into the panel there. So not a big deal. If you wanted to though, that would be the other change is that you would add another stud here. So you add a stud like a partition that offsets you enough to have nailing and you can double a stud. When we've done this, we just nail up scrap and that way, you know, we're making good efficient use of our materials. Here's that outside corner again. I'm laying out because it's an east-west wall. I'm laying out from the outside of the stud to center, and I want my foam to fully cover this. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how we go about taping that. So here that is in practice. Notice that that's what I mean by burning an inch and seven sixteenths. Then I find 24 inches as the center, add three quarters to get to the long point of my stud since it's a rake wall. That's it. Here you can just see on those plates, I have my channel or my partition marked out. That way I have lots of backing for my inside corner. Okay, so here's on the opposite end of the house as I was just showing in the SketchUp video. Here I have a wall that's budding my rake wall and you can see that that end panel on the rake wall has the exposed poly ISO. So the first layer of tape that I put on the corner basically goes from the right hand side or the outside zip panel, fully covers the poly ISO and it tapes the adjoining panel. What I do is I just work my way down, kind of smooth it as I go with my hand. So that's, the, that's layer number one. I like to roll the tape as I go. Remember, always, always, always roll the tape. So as I smoothed it with my hand as I worked my way down, I made sure that there were no wrinkles. And by pressing it in with the roller now, I know I've got good adhesion. 
Pro tip, make sure that you put your J-roller on a painter's pole. I'm able to reach all the way to the top without getting back on the ladder. Here's the trick I use for layer number two. I use the edge of the poly ISO as a guide. We want a minimum of one inch overlap on the tape and at least one inch lapping around the corner onto the zip panel itself. So by using the edge of the poly ISO, I have a nice straight line that I can follow all the way down. That gives me an inch and seven sixteenths overlap on that side and the remainder on the opposite side. As I go, I work in about three or three and a half foot increments and I smooth the tape and then I just wrap it around the corner. This ensures that I don't have any wrinkles. So I do that all the way to the bottom, cut it off, and then you guessed it, roll the tape. Option number two for taping the corner, if you're using the R6 or R3 panel, is to use a single layer of six inch tape. So what I like to do is just let the roll go I don't cut them to length ahead of time. I climb the ladder and then I release some of that paper, like maybe about a foot and a half, two feet, and I'm centering that on the corner itself. Then I just work my way down the corner, wrapping it as I go. That way I have no wrinkles. Once I feel like this side is nice and flat, there's no wrinkles, now I go to the other side and I typically just use the tip of my fingers to wrap the corner and then smooth it with my palm and work my way down. This part's a little more tedious when using a single piece of tape, but as you can see, it's still a pretty quick process. Once I know that it's wrinkle-free and nice and straight, now it's time to roll the tape. I like to roll the tape as I go so that I don't forget. Outside corners are pretty straightforward. Inside corners, however, it's best to start from the bottom and work to the top. I like to cut about three foot pieces and put it in. Here's my technique. I slightly bend the corner in with my fingers at the top and bottom, and then I press into the corner for a nice straight line. I have this little quick flash tool that makes quick work of smoothing out the opposite side while still leaving me with a nice 90 degree corner. Then I just do the same process all the way up the ladder. This method for me produces the most consistency and it looks the best. When you do this though, make sure that as you shingle the tape, you have at least a three inch minimum overlap. And do I even need to say it again? No, I think you get the point by now. Roll that tape. We always use a router to cut out our window openings. Because of the thicker panel, I just had to order a longer bit. Let's talk about nail sizing. So typically for us, shooting into a 7 16 panel, we use an eight penny common nail. That's two and a half inches by 0 0.131 inch diameter. That's what our engineer requires for our shear loads. Because these panels are one inch thicker, in the case of the R6, we have to use a longer nail. That is a minimum of a three inch by one three one nail. I like to order three and a quarters just for a little bit of peace of mind. So three and a quarter inch nail by 0.131. Don't forget to get the longer nail. Notice on the right hand side, I have a block line. That wraps around our entire house. You can see it in the far distance too. That allows us to use two foot or less pieces from the block line, overlap our bottom plates and rim and connect to our mud sill. So I like to cut this with a track saw because the straighter our, our cuts are, the easier it is to use up all of our scrap or waste. Depending on where you're building, you might need to protect that exposed edge of the foam that's on the outside of the mud sill. So what I do as I'm cutting my two foot rips is I go ahead and I tape those and I roll it. I hand it out to the guys who are nailing them in place. And that's all you need to know. Thanks for watching. Please hit that like and subscribe button. We'll see you in the next video.